Hello and welcome to this final boss fight live stream of Elite Dangerous. My name is John and I am currently in a seat mm -hmm. of the Raven Strike. And I am joined by Commander Jeff, who is commander of the Raven Strike. Hello! And we are finally actually going to actually be able to actually do this, maybe. <laughs> Possibly. 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 There we are, just bring up the dreamy thingy. Maybe. Oh, I should have chat open. Let me chat. Let me have to turn my screen up. There we go. There we go. There we go. So, how are you tonight, sir? Uh, I've got a bit of tickle in my throat, so I'm going to be reasonably quiet. Okay. Um, I've got me, I've got my warm drink, so. Well, welcome aboard the Raven Strike. Um, please keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle as we, have, as we continue with our flights. Oh, as it's a spaceship, I, yes, that'd be easy. sensible. I mean, we do have spacesuits that are for emergencies. Um, so, before we begin, quick question: Where do you think we are? Uh, we appear to be at Explorers Anchorage. Yeah. Because um, there's a big wanna... sign on the other wall that says... Oh, yeah. Do you want to just uh, pop up a new galaxy map so you can see where we are? Uh, okay. Uh... Where the... What? They may have changed something. It's, it's the... Um, go, to your, go to your left. Like, you go to your left and it's the... Where are we? From the bottom. Uh, if you're in a galaxy map, Zemo. That's a lot of that's a lot of things. Yep, yeah, zoom all the way out. We're in the center. Out. Keep zooming all the way out. <laughs> that is that is all the way out. It don't go any more out than this. We're in the middle. I think a, I'm looking at your stream, so there's a bit of a lag. Yeah, see how far how far away are we from home? Do you think? Well, that's where I am. This is this is where I am right now, and this is where you am. Yep. What are we doing here? Um, well, me, I was I decided to do a bit of exploring, and I thought, why not go to the center of the galaxy? Yeah, as so you do. Five months later, I, I, here I am. And I thought to myself, well, there's some cool stuff here. Why don't I show my old friend John what there is? So let's go back to the surface. So are we on a planet or are we in a... Is this a... We are in, we are in one of the more recent space stations that's been built, actually. This was built as part of the Distant World Expedition. So it's only existed for about a few months. Cool. And let's go and see what there is in this system because there's some cool stuff in this system. So let's launch and get out of here. Oh. Also, there's a lot of traffic in this system. Well, the center of the galaxy is pretty busy right now, apparently. And there's someone just got destroyed outside the, outside the docking bay by the looks of it. There's this whole distant worlds thing that I keep hearing about. Yep. I mean, it's either this or it's a uh, Final Fantasy thing. Get out of it so we can look at the station. So, what ship is this? This is still my Alliance Challenger. And there's the ship, there's the Explorer's Anchorage station. Ooh. Yeah, that does kind of look like it's in the process of being built still, doesn't it? 
it's completed. All the stuff that is completed. I don't know if there's anything else they're going to add to it, but yeah. But you can see what I mean. It still looks like it's I under construction. Like. Oh yeah. Um, let's head to. Where shall we go to? Let's start by going here. Better not do that. That's a planet. Yeah, avoid those. They're still solid. I can't help but notice you're aiming vaguely towards the planet. I'm aiming just past the planet. Notable stellar phenomena. Oh yes. Is that where we're going? That's where we're going, yes. What is notable about the stellar phenomena? Uh, you'll see. Might take us a bit of time to get this and get a bit of angle away from this planet and get a bit of speed going. Yeah, I don't have 432 years. If... <laughs> well, it's saying 6.2 days for me. Oh, it's only showing me the light years. No no thing about what speed we're going at at the moment. Oh, okay. Gunner! I'm the gunner now. You, yeah, you targeted the notable stellar phenomena. Well, I mean, that's what gunners do. John, 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 John. Phenomena. Do, 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 do. Phenomena. That's what gunners do, 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 do. <laughs> yep. So, have you seen uh, Man in the High Castle, Jeff? I have not. No, I've heard about it. I'm aware of the name. It's a alternate future where we didn't win the war or something. It's an alternate 1960s where, yeah, the the Allies didn't win the war, and like. The particular alternate universe that you're looking at in the show slash book mm. apparently started when Franklin D. Roosevelt was assassinated. That's okay. like, that's the big divergent point. Yeah. And basically, yeah, the Allies lose World War II and uh, the Germans drop the bomb on Washington hmm. and basically in the like my parents and I have been watching the show it was a Philip K. Dick book first yeah. uh, but then they made it into an Amazon Prime show and so we've just started watching that fairly recently I think okay. there's, about, there's about three seasons out and we're on episode 8 or 9 of season 1 Gonna drop from Super Cruise. Let's see if the multi crew thing still works or it's gonna do some funny with us. Oh. You still with me? Still with you. Good. Uh, that's a crystal. Yep. Why is there a crystal? Anytime you want to take, go outside and take any shots, do feel free to do so. I need to remember what's the controls for that. Um, for you, it'd probably be Control Alt Space to get you outside the cockpits. Yep. What is that? There's a lot of them. Yep. And they're purple and green. Yep, there's some green ones here as well. Scanning one. Don't be out of 
I'm just taking this in nice and slowly here. Sensible. These things are quite spiky. Yeah, they are. You appear to have given guns. These are purple metallic crystals. Purple metallic crystals. Purpurium metallic crystals. Oh, purium. Purpurium. What? What is purpurium? Purple, apparently. Ah. There's some green ones about here, is do you say? Yeah, over that way. Which way, sorry? Down. And Down. to to our right. Or maybe I meant up. Behind us now. I'm going to come to a stop and spin us around. Oh, okay. That way. Over there. I see it. I mean, they look exactly the same as the Papurium, but... They are, but let's see, what, green. let's see what they are. Yeah, let's see what they are. <sighs> to your left, you will see a Papurium flying past the window. Yep, and yep, that's very gladly by the window. Let's see what the screen ones are. It's pretty close. The green ones are Prasinum, Prasinum metallic crystals. Prasinum? Prasinum? How would you say that? Uh, Prasinum. Prasinium? No, oh, no, Prasinum. Prasinum. I suppose you didn't happen to pack a mining laser with you today. No, no, my, I haven't got any mining lasers. I might get into mining at some point. Not immediately, but at some point, because there's a lot of big money to be made, and you can make asteroids make go boom. Asteroid and rocks go make big booms. <laughs> yeah, I think these are all the same now. This is probably another premium. If you stick your hand out, you might be able to touch one as it goes by. Yeah, that's a... You just told me to keep my hands and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Good, you were listening. Put some hands away, let's go and sit somewhere else. Okay. So this is the first stop on our little trip tonight. Ooh. Oh, I'm disappointed. Here. Before we do that, I'm going to rearrange my fire slide. Because you've got control. Let's go here. So, did you you heard the news about the fleet carriers? I know, you did, but you heard the news about the new fleet carrier. Yeah, sixteen man fleet carriers. Yeah. What do you think? I'm intrigued. I think there's a lot that we need to know about them. What I want to know about them is how much they cost. That would be a good thing to know about them. 
Hey, Commander Blitz. Hey, Commander Blitz. Oh, seven. I think, um, I would like to know if they stay in world as sort of a mini, um, station. I so obviously, like, should, I think they should do because, um, if you parked, if one of your mates, like if I if I had one, and you parked your ship in it, that mean you can only access your ship online, and I'm sure that's the point they're going for. Yeah, but like it could be that it just kicks you out to the nearest station, or you just start off in space or something. But uh, if it if it stays as a place that I can leave and also go back to, I think it should be persistent. Yeah, I'm hoping it would make more sense. That would be a better way for phrasing that. Yes. Yeah. Did you ever see the movie a different subject? Did you ever see the movie Event Horizon? A while ago. Oh, okay. Because have you seen our current destination? No. Oh, yes. <laughs> Should I worry? Um, I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, but back to what I was saying before we got to the uh, notable stellar phenomenon. Or have we arrived at Event Horizon? Structure detected. Use data link scanner to search for targets. Do not shoot at the thing, by the way. What is this? It's a comms installation. Targets identified. Use prompt these data link scanner to, to, to interrogate targets. Signal lost. Are you outside or are you based on? I'm going to slow down a bit here. It's a ship. Mike Littlewood. Dangerous. Clean. Wanted. Clean. Anything to watch these things if you scan them. Sub targets identified. Cargo bay yeah. 2. Yeah. What's the contact list look like? Oh, there's a lot of stuff here. So if you wanted to some for some reason take this thing, that's what you'd have to do. Hackable data transmitter. I'm just gonna fly past and see how big this thing will be as of this thing. This is a big thing. Ship's log uplink zero. So is this a station or is this a ship? It's a station. I believe it's a station. You can't, it's not a dockable station. I believe it's a station. What's the hackable data transmitter there? Um, let's have a look. I'm not planning to hack it. We have visitors. We have ourselves a ship to fight with. Under attack. 
Uh, Don't get up that. Still with me? Still with you? What the frick happened there? Um, there are three in a wing and they all decided to kill. Oh, yeah. And they kind of burned through our shields pretty quickly, which I wasn't expecting. Shields online. So that's the event horizon. What else have we got here? Explorers Anchorage, Nudge still up Let's go see something else, shall we? Let's go see what's next door. John? Yes? Welcome to the center of the galaxy. Ooh. That is impressive. That is, isn't it? What did you do? I dropped us out of, I dropped us out of super cruise. Look at it. Look at it all go, keep go all wibbly. Are you trying to shoot the black hole? Yes. It's a black hole that makes everything go all wibbly. All wibbly. So. Charging. You know Interstellar. I know Interstellar. You may have yes. you may have heard of it. I yes. It's a little film. Yep. Couple of big budget people. Yep. So they wanted to simulate the black hole because obviously that's kind of an important element of the plot line. Yeah. And so they went to some physicists. Oh, yes. And they said, what would a black hole do? Yep. How would it react? Give us information. And the physicist said, finally, somebody wants to talk to us. <laughs> oh, that's where the distant world is. Okay. And gave them a bunch of information about how a black hole would react. Yep. Pay no attention to the sky suddenly distorting around us. And uh, the the computer animators who were yep. making the black hole. Do not look outside at the sky. Ooh, trippy. Very trippy. Uh, the computer animators who were making the black hole in Interstellar fed this information from the physicists into the computer. Yeah, and um, simulated the black hole, 
and they got this very impressive black hole with all of the corona whizzing around it and this like ring of uh what looked like what looked like the corona in a ring in front of the black hole mm -hmm. and they thought um that's weird why does it look like that like there must be something wrong with our computers it's rendered it wrong yeah and they took it back to the physicists and said like what's what what's going on here they said what and the physicists said oh that's very interesting we didn't think that would happen <laughs> but that makes sense and then it turns out that basically having been fed all of the information for the black hole the computer simulation made the black hole look like black holes look before we knew what the black holes actually looked like oh awesome but it, it, it is a very accurate black hole in interstellar because mm. physics works yeah basically like because you can feed the physics into the computer that are accurate and the computer can do accurate calculations about physics the mm. physics just works also what are we looking at here this is the distant the worlds DS this is dssv distant worlds yes again another another product of the distant worlds expedition well presumably the the actual expedition ship no, the expedition itself was a, a, a bunch of pilots all um, basically going out to going out to explore. Along the way, wow. they did some community goals, and I think this was one of them. This station was one. I think this was another one, and we're crashing into that. Don't don't do that. Don't do that. That that not good. That not good. Thing. I miss. Is this another one we can't dock at, but we can look at? I think we can actually dock at this one. Oh. I think we can. I'm not sure. uh, maybe we can't. We should be able to. It's a mega ship. Yeah, maybe we can't. Oh, look at it! Look at it! Look at the glowy thingies. There's a ship up, ship, uh, ship log uplink thing. Do we want to? There's a ship log uplink. Where's a ship log? One of those things. Yeah, that thingy. Also, on someone else's ship, apparently the uh, there's technical issues and all entertainment scheduled for this evening has been cancelled. So sorry for the inconvenience. Um, oh, maybe they can watch us instead. Where is this ship log uplink? Where is it? Where are you? What's oh, up there? Oh, yeah, there it is. There you are. That seems like the sort of thing that'll give us some information. It does. Let's see if it will give us information. Scan complete. Uplog, uplink, uplink log data downloaded, which I don't seem to have any. Uplink log. Up. Try saying that five times fast. Uplink log. <coughs> uplink Try saying log it one data. times. Try saying it one time at all. Yeah. Where's L black hole? Passengers advise that the gymnasium is currently closed due to equipment malfunction. As you do. Let's return back to black hole thing. 
Let's get out of this mess up, then we turn to the black hole room. These people friendly? Wait, Guardian Hybrid Power Plant. Oh yeah. Guardian oh. Frame Shift Drive Booster. Yep. Guardian Hybrid Power Distributor. Yep. Wow. I've been busy. You've been busy. I've been very busy. He is lawless. Yes, but I'm not going to, um... Everybody out here is going to be lawless. It's a sex thing. So while we're heading into the next one, we're heading. No, we're just going. Just going back into the base of the black hole. All oh, right. Yeah. Uh, very interesting. Would recommend if you haven't seen uh, Man in the High Castle. Okay. Space it's, is going trippy again, by the way. I noticed that it's happening right in front of the window. Um, it's got some interesting things like the. Because the Japanese didn't lose World War Two, yeah, and got you know obviously in reality, like like in our version of history, they got blasted by the nuclear bombs and had to rebuild their society. Oh yeah. Whereas in this version, they've won the war. They've kind of come to a stalemate with the Nazis and have taken like the Nazis have taken. Uh, the east of America hmm. the Japanese have taken the west of America and sort of the middle of America is a neutral zone um, but because the Japanese haven't had to rebuild their civilization their civilization is still very um, oh boy Their civilization is still very um, not technologically advanced. Mm -hmm. Scan complete. Tourist speaking data downloaded. Let's see what it says. That explains why there's so many tourist ships here. Sorry, right, we did not nearly crash into it. I don't know what you're talking about. I definitely wasn't looking at it. <laughs> The center, tourist spot 0082, Sagittarius A star, is a popular destination for explorers and travelers. It is a supermassive black hole of the type found in most spiral and elliptical galaxies. Radio transmissions indicating its existence were first discovered by Carl Jansky. So now you know. Mm. There it is, tri looking all trippy and black hole. DG Space Tours, Beautiful Corner Tours, and a hauler. Red Planet Taxi Service. These are all the messages we've just been seeing. Oh, all the people whose entertainment's been cancelled. That's the ones. Yeah, that's the. Um... Galactic Travel ABW Galactic Travels Entertainment has been cancelled for the evenings and yep. the Red Planet Taxi Service passengers are reminded that the gymnasium is currently closed due to equipment malfunction but yeah because of that obviously the Japanese culture side of things is still very feudal and very mysticism based yep. which I find quite interesting and uh, on the Nazi side of things, uh, the Nazis are Nazis. Mm. Um, and like one of the main 
Nazi characters that we've seen. And this is going to be slight spoilers for episode 9 or so. But he's just been confronted with a big thing that makes him question the correctness of being a Nazi. Excuse Would... me while I just get away from the scene. Apparently black holes can overheat as well. Okay. I'm assuming that's the systems are overheating trying to stop us from falling into it. I guess. More than the black hole is emitting heat. Either way, it's something that we don't be... It's something that's a problem right now. It's no longer a problem. It is no longer a problem. Um, but yeah, he's he's confronting something that is making him question the decisions he has made hmm. to get to where he is in life. And there's a lot of very interesting acting and sort of um, in the latest episode we've just watched tonight, there's a lot of that acting of we are saying these words, but there is a secret undercurrent underneath it is these aren't the words we mean. Like, these things that we're saying aren't what we mean, and we actually mean something else entirely that we're not saying. And it's sort of the, the uh, acting and the meaning in the, the things they're not saying as much as in the things they are. Hmm. Which is cool. Cool. So one of the things that Frontier also... They realise that people who got to... Might want to be able to reef Star nearby. That. You're cutting out a lot. Sorry. So Frontier um, decided to put in a star near the black hole that you can refuel, that you can scoop. Okay. Which is nice of them. Where are we going to now? So, John, talk to me about mutants. That's maybe coming up soon. So tomorrow night we've got uh, a stream of Mutants and Masterminds. Uh, Mutants and Masterminds is a D20 based game that is a superhero based game. So it's obviously sort of, it, it, it's a modern setting as opposed to sort of the standard D&D &D style games that are in a fantasy world. But it still uses the standard D, like the D&D, the &D, it's, I'm doing Mutants and Masterminds second edition, which is the same sort of era as D and D three to three point five. So it still uses the standard sort of strength dex con, strength dex con int whiz per uh, int whiz car. Yeah. So there's a lot of it that remains the same between the two, but it's also four color characters and interesting superheroes and fun abilities that you can get. And I'm not going to spoil what any of the characters are that we've got playing tomorrow. <laughs> okay. um, but I will say that there are options in there for things like um, I have previously made a character who's uh, I spent a lot of the power points that you get on making a character who was reasonably standard at pretty much everything, but had a healing factor coming out of the wazoo. <laughs> so in that, is... carry on. Yep. In that he instantly recovered from anything, including okay. death. So does it have classes, or do you just like no? You, you customize the character, and then that. Determines what the character is. 
Yeah, it it is it is a classless system. Um, you start with a number of power points for the characters that we've built for tomorrow's game. We've started at the standard starting point, which is tenth level. Hmm. Um, because it's like you can start at level ten, which is a nice hopping into point or you can sort of do starting at level 5 and you'll be like the Teen Titans you'll be a slightly you know, a group of sidekicks that are now venturing out to be heroes in their own right Yeah. or you can start at level 15 if you just want to build the Justice League but basically whichever power level you start at you get a certain number of power points or hero points hmm um, for these guys it's 150 and then that is spread between everything okay um, so that's abilities that's attack and defense that's um, skills and this is old style D&D rules where skills have ranks rather than you know it or you don't um, it's also um, feats it's superpowers uh, you can buy equipment which is basically superpowers but you don't use them because obviously like the idea is it's a very customizable thing so you can have it well okay well my character's Batman so I have these superpowers but they're all tied to this equipment I carry rather than myself yeah so I've got the power of like blasting but it's only as long as I've got this ray gun or I've got the power of stunning, but it's as long as I've got this batarang that I fling at the enemy and it knocks them in the head and stuns them. Okay. Or I've got the power of flight as long as I've got this jetpack. Hmm. And there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting things like um, drawbacks that allow you to take powers in a different way. So like. Uh, with flight, for instance, you can take the drawback of levitation. Hmm. And if you have levitation, your flight still works exactly the same, only your only options for direction are up and down. Yeah. You can't do, like... It, it doesn't let you can't, go left, be... right, forward and backwards. Literally yeah. just... Whatever level of flight you have, you can fly that fast straight up or down yeah. again. Uh, or you can do gliding, in which case you can go forward, but while you go forward, I think it's for every two feet you go forward, you go one foot down. Yeah. So it's it, it's a case of... I'm, I'm going to hit the ground eventually, but it's going to take me a lot longer than normally just falling off a building would. Hmm. Or, for instance, one of the ones that I was looking at today for a potential character that might have joined the group is uh, you can take teleportation, which is a fairly standard superhero-y type power for getting around to places. Yep. Yeah. But one of the drawbacks is you can only teleport when you've got some form of a medium. And for this particular character, the medium was going to be, I can teleport as long as there's an electrical cable that I can hop through. Okay, yeah. So you can have that sort of a thing as, as a drawback to my power is, I can teleport great distances in the blink of an eye as long as there's a power cable between here and there. <laughs> yeah. Although there was one that was uh, a restaurant reviewer that got superpowers and they could teleport to anywhere in the world as long as they teleported to the door of a restaurant. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, so yeah, it, it's a pretty cool power. You can teleport to any doorway in the world 
as long as the door like as long as that that location has a restaurant you can teleport to the restaurant but you're a restaurant critic you know where the restaurants are yeah i mean you do in america but you might not do in tibet that's true um but it's it's an interesting game and it's got a lot of there are some overpowered powers because of mm -hmm. course there are I've not let anybody take those in this game so we shouldn't have that issue to deal with mm -hmm. there are going to be some interesting uh, character interactions I hope in tomorrow's game there are going to be some interesting uses of the superpowers that I in no way will be prepared for I'm sure <laughs> which is mostly because Unlike a lot of games, I am not going into this one with a butt-ton of notes. I've got some ideas for the beginning, middle, and end, but that might not come up. <laughs> uh, and, and so I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to mostly just winging it and going off the fact that I know a butt-ton of comics to be able to pull <laughs> something out of my very yeah. nerdy backstory to be able to throw at people and be like I had a plan all along ha ha <laughs> well game I'm hoping to run very shortly I'm at the end of September but also by the same fast minds expanse and again that's also, that's I think that's also interesting it's not d20 for you're cutting out a bit there Jeff am I cutting out a bit sorry I said one game I'm planning to the end of Nope. Still. Still not. Uh, let me disconnect and reconnect. Hello, testing one, two, three. This is the captain of the Raven Strike. Can you hear me? That seems to be better now. So, as I was saying, I'm hoping to run the Expanse at the end of September, which is also by the people who made Mutants and Mastermind. And I've been really getting into it. I really like how it does things. It's another classless system again. Cool. With this one, you build up you build up your character by um, deciding their background, their profession, what they're good at. And instead of and what you do is you get a list of, you get your abilities, but then you get focuses for those abilities. So like everybody has a dexterity score, so right. But, some, but there may be some situations where some characters um, have bonuses. So like. For a dexterity, you could say I, you know, a dexterity, but I'm also good at acrobatics. So if there's a situation okay. that specifically requires acrobatics, you get a bonus. You get an extra bonus on top of that. That sounds very similar to like the Scion or the White Wolf system. Yeah. And how Scion and White Wolf handle skills. It is. There's probably yeah. There's probably some overlap there. So like you could say okay. I have an accuracy skill, which means I can shoot a gun. But if I'm using a pistol, maybe I'm better with pistols, so I get an act, so I get a bonus on pistols. Yeah, because uh, White Wolf, who did Scion the first edition, and obviously did lots of uh, vampire and changeling and a bunch of other bits and pieces. Uh, they have. Um, <laughs> You have like the firearm skill. Yeah. And then if you take the firearm skill, you're skilled at firearms, but you can then filter that down to say, well, my character is prof particularly proficient with pistols. And so uh, you take the specialization in pistols, and suddenly instead of being like a level 2 in firearms you're a level 3 in pistols hmm. and if it's not a pistol you're a level 2 still so you can still use a gun because you know that all guns are vaguely similar yep. but uh, you know you are better at pistols indeed yeah and it's that sort of thing and the other thing that I really like as well is how combat works how damage works so in mutants and masterminds, just combat, just like straight up, you have a hit point score, and whatever damage you take goes off that. Like no. Oh, how does that work? So, 
there's there's two key differences that we're going to have to get into for mutants and masterminds. The first one, and I'm going to get to this, I'm going to say this one first because it's not the hit points thing. The first thing is that strength and dexterity do not feature in your ability to hit people with melee or ranged attacks. Okay. Uh, basically because they say in the start of the Mutants and Masterminds book that they wanted all of the statistics to have the same weight. Yeah. And if you've got, you know, if you've got a dexterous character, they wanted a dexterous character who wasn't able to necessarily shoot as well as everybody else. Like, you know, yes, I'm dexterous, but that's more in I'm dexterous at getting out of the way of things, or I'm dexterous in a different way. And so it's not necessarily, I'm amazing at firing a gun. Or similarly, I'm a strong character, but that's mostly in, I've weightlifted, not I'm really good at punching people. Uh, so strength and dex don't feature into attack. Strength still features into once you have connected with someone it still adds a bonus to the damage you deal. But the damage you deal uh, is actually a saving throw that the other person needs to make. Okay. And so if you punch someone and connect with it, or you hit someone with a ranged attack and connect with it, you have a difficulty class of the attack. Um... And the opponent then has to make a toughness save. Okay. Um, if you pass the toughness save, you've been hit, but you've resisted the damage, and you're strong enough, a manly enough, or you know, personally enough to roll <coughs> with it. Yeah. Uh, you just kind of absorb the damage. It hit you, but you're fine. If you fail the toughness save. You are bruised. And it doesn't matter what damage, as long as any nope. damage in that would... okay. As long as you get hit and you fail the toughness save, if the toughness save was 5 or 50 and you fail it, you get bruised. Oh, okay. Um, and bruised is a cumulative thing. You have levels of bruised. If you fail the save by five or more, you are stunned and bruised. And stun works basically the same as it does in D&D. You kind of just stumble around the battlefield for a turn going... <laughs> yep. uh, if you fail it by ten or more, you are staggered, stunned and bruised. And then if you fail it by fifteen or more... The, you're just knocked out. Yeah. Um, but each level of bruised you take is a minus one to your toughness saves. So the more you, more you get hit, the more difficult it's, more difficult it's going to be. The to more difficult it is to stay on your feet. Yeah. Uh, and then also, for the fun of being a superhero, if at any point... I think it's if at any point you connect with an attack and you stun the person so they fail the toughness save by five or more, mm -hmm. you also have a chance to hit knockback. In which case you then connect, you work out the, the difference between the damage that got through the person's armour And mm -hmm. the leftover damage. And that tells you how far the person flies in the opposite direction from your attack. Okay. Because obviously, as you see in superhero fights, if Superman punches a dude, he yeah, goes yeah. flying. Uh, so that's a thing that can come up if, if somebody with insane levels of strength or insane levels of blasting power hits you 
you go flying in the opposite direction if you're not nailed down. And it becomes harder and harder for you to keep standing and keep taking these hits. Hmm. Uh, because each time you get bruised, it becomes harder and harder to successfully pass the toughness save. Hmm. But yeah, there is no hit points. It is just a case of eventually you fail the toughness save by 15 or more. Okay. And then you fall unconscious. I can see some of this because how it works in the expanse. So when you're shooting at someone, say with a pistol, you roll your attack and add your modifiers. And the first thing you have to do is, do you hit them based on their defense, which is derived from their dexterity stats? So, do you hit them or do they duck out the way? Right. If you connect with them, you roll the damage from the weapon. So, you end up with a number there. The first thing that happens is, the target has a toughness. Okay. Even if that toughness is zero. So, the first thing that happens is, the damage is reduced by the target's toughness. So, if the if you, if you had target has a toughness of one or is wearing an armor for two, the damage gets reduced by that number. And then it gets interesting. So, um, characters in the expanse have fortune points, which is a measure of how lucky they are, or how you know how good they are, how resourceful they are. Okay. And there's a couple of a couple of uses. One of its uses is you can spend fortune to change the score on a dice roll, or you can use fortune to absorb damage. So, if our attack has damaged is causing damage and it's been reduced by the enemy's toughness, they can then choose to absorb as much damage as they want to, or they can with their fortune. Okay. So in some way, it acts, it acts like hit points that way. But then, if there's any damage left over from that, they have to take an injured condition, which basically means that it hits them and shoots them in, like, in their arm or their shoulder, and they get minus one to all their abilities. And then, once they once they take an injured condition, they can roll a d6 and again reduce the damage by that much. If there's any damage left over, then they have to take a wounded condition, which is the same as an injured but twice as bad. Right. And, and again, roll a d6 to um, reduce the damage. And then at the end of all that, if there's any damage left over, they're taken out of the fight. Interesting. So it's all about, you know, if you get damage, if you get, if damage is dealt to you, it's all about finding ways to reduce that damage. Preferably down to zero. Zero is a good number. Yeah. So again, there's no hit points. Any real hit points is kind of like the fortune points. But if you get dealt enough damage, you have to start rolling dice and taking injured conditions to um, reduce the to reduce the damage that you take and if there's any damage if you take even one point of damage at the end you're out interesting and, shoot, and the attacker can choose whether you die or you're just unconscious or whatever yeah with this you can do like it typically assumes you are doing non-lethal damage yeah but you can say well i'm doing lethal damage and that causes you to do bruised and injured i think it is yeah but it's bruised and something else, and then it's like it, it, it's worse things happen to you if you are taking or dealing lethal damage. Mm. But um, oh, that's interesting because, like, I was saying to Sean the other month, a few months ago, old school, like. I would love to see them do a thing that was like old school uh, D20 Star Wars. I don't don't know if you ever saw any of the old school D20 Star Wars role playing game. No, I haven't. No. But basically, that did hit points differently, and so you had two pools of hit points. So at first level. You gained a pool of wounds equal to your character's constitution. Okay. And, and that never changed. That pool of wounds stayed the same if you were level 1 or level 20. But you then also gained vitality points. Mm-hmm. And basically, their version of the vitality points was hit points in any other system. Hmm. And so it was, you know, you rolled a dice depending on your class, and you had that many plus your con score, like con mod, in vitality points. And the way they explain vitality points is instead of, like, 
instead of being you've been hit and you've taken damage, the vitality points are you just move out of the way at the last second. It, it, it's that pool of energy to, to just dodge the attack or just kind of... Okay, it so it burns your shoulder, but it doesn't actually so hit you. As you go through, your vitality goes down, so you get more and more tired and less able to get out of the way. And then you hit the wound points, which is the point where it's actually hitting flesh. And like okay. when you take damage in the wound pool, it can do like you know that's the point where you are, you know, the Jedi gets sliced across the arm, and like there is actually a cut across the arm. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, if you do enough damage in the wound level, that's the time. That's the kind of time where your your player is then looking to see the cost of cybernetic eyes and arms and things. Yeah. Um, but the other interesting thing with this system was force users could use their vitality points to boost certain force abilities. Okay. Because the vitality score wasn't just a measure of your character's healthiness, it was how energetic you were. Mm. How connected to some mysterious life force you were. And so you could use it to fuel for instance, force lightning. Mm. And cause it to deal more damage. But you were also putting yourself at risk of potentially opening yourself up to an attack if you didn't manage to take out the person you were fighting. Yeah. Because you were you were draining your own life force into the attack. And then you could also do the same thing with your wounds because it was still a measure of your character's life force. But at that point it's kind of the like you know that bit in uh, cartoons where the the character whose psychic nose bleeds yes. and they like get very faint and fall over it's that level of i need to do this thing now with my immense vaguely watch magical hole. powers Let's watch the black hole go fast and do wibbly stuff to space Whee. um it was that kind of desperate manoeuvre that causes you to nearly kill your character to try and finish off the bad guy. Hmm. But I think that's kind of a funky um, option for like spellcasters. Hmm. Of like, well, you know, I've got this spell and it does 2d6, but actually I really need it to deal 3d6 or 4d6 I need it to do more damage at this point because it's vital we take that guy out quickly so you then burn hit points on it yeah um I was kind of saying it to Tanny the other day it, it, it's the sort of thing they've done with this new wild magic barbarian that's in the Unearthed Arcana this month. Okay. In the at six level. I don't know if you've read the Unearthed Arcana that came out. I haven't read it, no. Basically there's a wild magic barbarian, which is awesome because wild magic is fun and barbarians are cool. Mm -hmm. And basically when a wild magic barbarian rages, they roll a D eight and a random magical thing occurs. Okay. Um, and they've now got one in the Golden Tooth because I thought that's a really funky thing. Um, and in the in the second fight he was in, he raged and he caused half the group, including half of the Golden Tooth, to fail a Wisdom saving throw, which meant he caught glimpses of their mind, and they were all at disadvantage to try and attack him. Uh. And obviously the Golden Tooth weren't trying to attack him, it just said any creature within 30 feet has to do a wisdom save. And so I had the characters that were in range do the wisdom save 
and had them think for the whole time, like, okay, when's he going to exact mind control over us? Or, like, when is he going to reveal that actually we've been dead this whole time or we're asleep or something? And just after the fight, he was like, I saw her inside your mind. Yeah. But at sixth level of this class, uh, the, the barbarian can lay their hands on a friend. Yeah. And they they roll a d4. And if they roll whatever number they roll, if that character has spell slots, they regain a spell slot of that level. Okay. If the character can't regain spell slots of that level, either because they don't have spell slots of that level or they've got them all, uh, they regain five times, or they gain temporary hit points equal to five times the number rolled. Okay. So basically, you get between five and twenty hit points. Hmm. Um, that's a binary star system. Yep. Um, but the Barbarian then takes five times the number rolled in force damage. So, basically it is a... You need a, you need a boost in your spellcasting. Boom, I've taken some damage. I'm trading the tank's hit points for spellcasting ability. Okay. Yeah. Which I think is kind of fun because obviously the the barbarian, you know, has a lot of hit points to play with, as we see with Felief and his ability to have over a hundred of the things, and be yeah. damn near impossible for me to hit, and even when I do hit him, they deal like one damage to him. But sort of as I was saying at Titani, hit points are a resource the same as any other yep. you win the fight as much as if you you know you win it with one hit point as much as if you win it with all of them so if you've got them spare and you need to do a thing if you've even got 20 of them spare you know you can do this I think that's cool. Hmm. Thought we'd go back and do some um, pirate hunting in the resource extraction sites to finish off. That should be a good way to finish off. That sounds a good way to end the stream to me. So either we come back with some money or we get blown up, one of the two. Yeah, well, it's not my ship, so. No. And, yeah, I've, I've kind of got the money for it. Did I tell you how much money I got for this? Did I tell you how much money I got for this trip? How much? So, when I got to um, the station, it took me about half an hour to process all the systems I've been to, and I came out with it with over 650 million credits. Wow. So, yeah. I'm planning my next thing I'm going to buy with it. And we're also going to see some interesting characters because we've got some people that aren't in a lot of FBF streams at the moment playing tomorrow. Okay. Because we've convinced Shannon to play with us. And we we apparently need to do that more often. <laughs> okay. Um... Reminds me, I need to make a list of people who I need to add to the FBF website as to the role, play. to the role playing and zone and to, to the, the staff as well. and to the allies page. Um, Go 
playing some tabletop simulations. Yeah, we should. Have we looked to see if... Um, what's going on? Have I been dropped? No, I'm still here. Am I still here? Should still be here. Yeah, I'm still here. Oh boy, that looked like we went through a thing. Oh boy, if you don't pull up soon, we are going to go through a thing. We went through a thing. Did we go through a thing? We just hit an asteroid on my screen, at least. It went squilch. <laughs> Are we just driving straight forward at the moment on yours? No, we should be, um... Okay, let's see if we can take you out without too much hassle. Yep, I'm not with you. You're not? Uh, no, we've... Ever since we stopped, we've just driven straight forward. Oh, okay. And Still text of mine. I can't control. You're controlling it on... Oh, wait. Oh. It's just pulled me back. Uh, what's going on now? We're just going around in a circle. Scan detected. Any minute now, it might actually catch up with me fully being where you are. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, a ship just blew up. On the plus side, I get some money for that, I guess. On the plus side, you get some money out of it. I assume that... Oh, you just got a bounty. Yep, I just did some bounty hunting. We're under attack by something. I'm, I sure look forward to finding out what that is. Maybe. <laughs> this is a weird thing. What's happening? Can you not do it? Can you not... I... Uh... So let me try and invite you again if I can. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just sat in a ship. Put you back there. Oh, yeah, I got 6,905 for that. You disconnected? It's loading. I am loaded, dude. You are loaded. Invite me. Of course. Invite to crew. Low adding. So we've spoken a lot about Mutas and Masterminds that's happening tomorrow and a bunch of yep. other role-playing games we're going to talk about playing. Something we haven't talked about yet. Oh, we're under attack.
Are you in? Are you in the cockpit? I'm in the cockpit, but I can't enter the gunner role. Because uh, I'm probably gonna be actually using it. Hello there. Oh, I'm a gunner now. Cool. cool. Shooting at that guy. Target shields offline. Miss out if you can. I don't seem yeah. to have missile. Scan detected. Target shields offline. Scan detected. Target destroyed. And there's another one out here. I'll have a quick look and see if I can missile. Oh, there's one. Epi Methus. If he um wanted He is wanted and a novice and he's firing at people. Oh shoot. Are you doing backflips at the moment? Oh, no you weren't. Uh, I'm not sure I'm 100% connected right now. Under attack. Scan detected. What's going on here? Are you still there? Not a hundred percent sure right now. You're breaking up. I'm fairly certain the answer is no. One over here. Yeah. And Duke. Let's try this person. Has anybody disappeared? Can you hear me, Jeff? It's uh, it's not looking good. It's dropping every frame at the moment, and I'm fairly certain I'm not actually connected to your game. Still connected. Um, I I can still see you're connected. Where are we right now? We're still in the region. So. Yeah, because in my game we're just out in the middle of space. Can you see Epimethus? Oh, you're wanted. Scan detected. Come back here, you.
Got another one. There you don't come back here. Oh, I think he's jumping for it. Right, where's the next one then? I think we might have to call it after this next one. Yep. So I, don't, I don't know how well this is looking at the moment. It is pretty slow at the moment. It's like something like your pink, your whatever, your connection is just completely gone. Okay, where'd he go? Finish up this one then. Target shields offline. Boom! Oh, there we yeah, go. go ahead, back. That's a fairly good way to finish up. Yeah. Shall we head back and call, bring this thing to an end? Yeah, let's do that. So while we're heading back, uh, if you're seeing any of these frames... Big F. What is, what is up with my computer right now? It's jumping up and down between, like... No KBS. Six. Zero. Come on, give me some internet. Please, please give me some internet. Jeff, when this when this stream is finished, you need to go and watch that pirate chasing segment of the stream or whatever actually makes it into Twitch. I've been. I've got. I've got this stream up on my um, iPad here, and yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> um. Anyway, one thing that we are going to talk about that's coming up real soon is at the end of October, we are going to MCM Comic Con. The table has been booked and paid for. Uh, the hotel rooms have been booked and paid for. Um. We have got panels, which is exciting. Um, it's all looking pretty good at the moment. Um, we are going to be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, Jeff will presumably be there Friday and Saturday as usual. All right. I will be there. Um, I will be there all weekend because that's the kind of guy I am. And also, if I'm not, then nobody's there Sunday. <laughs> that could be interesting. Um, we're going to have a number of FBF peeps. Oh, pardon me. We're going to have a number of FBF people around. Uh, we have table 14 in the studio, which is one of the tables actually looking into the studio space this time. Uh, unless the map was very misleading. Um, mm -hmm. and then immediately next to us is Queen Creeps. Uh, so that'll be fun. Um, I 
we're going to have merchandise that you've never seen from us before. So if you're coming, there is going to be an exclusive piece of, mer piece of merchandise. <laughs> There's going to be an exclusive piece of merchandise that we're going to have made that will, one, only be available while we've got it. Um, it will be limited. We will not make it in this style again. Um, it will be only available from coming to meet us. So if if we still have them after this weekend, we won't be selling them on the website anyway. It will literally be only at places where we go and have a booth presence that you'll be able to buy this from us. Um, it is very D&D &D related. So that's... Not, that's not, not, not slightly D&D &D related. Not slightly D&D, very very D, D heavy like if you're a fan of D, D, this is a D, D thing it's not a specifically D, D. like it's not a dice we're not making a dice oh, but, but, but it is a D, D thing hmm. um we have started and this is a thing that we've not done really before we've started to look at the table layout already and we're planning things, and I'm excited by the things we're planning. Um, it's going to be fun. Um, on the Saturday... Well, actually, let's start. On the Friday, Jeff and I have got a panel about midday, middle of the day, uh, where we're going to just talk about the games we're playing, Final Boss Fight as a whole... Who we are, what we are, where we plan to go in the future. We're gonna hopefully have we new trailer have answers, answers to all these questions and more. All these questions and more. We're gonna hopefully have a new trailer. Uh, because I am in talks with people about at least one new trailer. We're gonna have there to answer the question of what we're doing soon. Uh, and that's that's news to Jeff. That is news to Jeff. Um, I am I am currently in talks with other channels about collaborations that we're doing with them and trailers for such. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that, really, uh, in terms of that bit. Then on the Saturday. Uh, for the final hour and a half of the show, so from 5.30 to 7 o'clock, come and sit down and take a load off and just enjoy the last hour and a half of the show with some Dungeons & Dragons live on stage. Uh, I'm currently leaning towards, heavily leaning towards it being a Golden Tooth D&D &D experience. So let's just watch this Earth-like panic go past as we go into the station. That is an Earth-like planet. It is. Kind of want to deploy a hard point and shoot it, but i will probably get upset. Why would you do that? Oh, for fun. What possible reason could you have to do that? What's the worst that could happen? Somebody gets a bit annoyed. <laughs> um, I'm leaning towards it being a Golden Tooth experience because they are a D&D &D group that we've not had on stage yet um, I'm looking to bring some new characters up onto the stage who haven't been on stage before it, it's going to be interesting it's going to be something. It, it's definitely going to be a thing. It's going to be a thing. It's going to, it's going to be a thing. I need to work out what the thing is, but it's a th it, it, it's going to be that. Um, but first, before we get to that, I, next week... Well, this let's finish up this week. 
tomorrow night, Mutants and Masterminds. Uh, Sunday night, Storm King's Thunder. Uh, we're going to be missing a few peeps from Storm King's Thunder this weekend, but hopefully the rest of them can navigate peacefully through um, the Storm Giants' home. Sorry, I just... You, you said peacefully and Storm King and the Storm King's Thunder team in the same breath. That doesn't go to well, I mean, Talon's not there anymore, so... He did not start fights, he finished them. Yeah. He... At occasions he did both. Um... But apparently I've got a problem at the moment in that my players keep fleeing the country for Spain. Because last, last time, um, Michael Yaghol was in Spain, and this time Kiri is in Spain. Why don't you just move the whole thing to Spain? I've suggested this to Amy, that next year we synchronise our holidays and we all go to Spain. And we just play in Spain. Um... Now, pay attention, John. This is how you land a ship. This is how I land a ship anyway. I take my hands off the controls and let someone else do it. <laughs> um, Monday next week, Sean and I are doing some town planning in Minecraft. Uh, we're going to hopefully get another resident or two into the town. Um, last last time we were on the Direwolf 20 mod pack server, we got Queen Creeps, or Queen and Creeps, into the world. This time, I don't know who we're planning. We've got, we've got a couple. We've got Brian, I think. We've got, um, uh, Jennifer. I think we've got Tanny still Tani. to make. Oh, no, no, we've made Tanny. Uh, Jennifer needs to be made. Uh, Sean needs to be made. Brian needs to be made. Uh, so that's all exciting. Uh, Wednesday next week, the Golden Tooth start their epic 21-day minimum trek through the Underdark. Uh, we'll see how smoothly that goes. And assuming they make it out at some point, uh, they'll be probably be the, t the they'll probably be the people I'm picking on at MCM Comic Con for now guys though I've been John Jeff's been the pilot we'll see you real soon for more of other stuff and possibly more of this if my computer will ever cope with the streaming it again for now guys so long Bye.